Yo and welcome back to Danscapes. In today's episode, I wanted to give you some tips if you were thinking about starting jiu-jitsu from a beginner's point of view. I'm going to learn jiu-jitsu. So I've been training jiu-jitsu for about five years now. I started back in 2015, I think it was, maybe. Maybe even earlier than that. I'd just been doing it on and off. So the first few years, I was really on it and then kind of took a break kept coming in and out. And then recently back in last year, I started training solidly again. So for those of you who don't know what Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is, it's a grappling martial art. There's no striking involved, but it was taught to a family in Brazil uh, by a judo guy. And then they kind of made it their own to show that a weaker guy can control a stronger, bigger opponent. They went on to create the UFC to show that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was the best martial art. Just to give you a lowdown, you can go through the belt system there. You start with a white belt and you get stripes as you go along. So you get four stripes and then you're ready to go on to your blue belt, which is the next one up. Again, four stripes and then you go on to your purple belt, etc. and then brown and then black and then if you want, you can get stripes on your black and then you go to coral, reds, you know, but that's years down the line. What makes Brazilian Jiu Jitsu different from other martial arts is you don't pay for a formal grading. You just turn up, go to class, you spar and show your abilities in your sparring rounds. And if your coach thinks you're ready, he'll just hand you a blue belt. What I found great about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was because you're sparring every session, and what got me hooked was just the intensity of it and the fact that once I would started to learn moves, when new people came in and they were bigger and stronger than me, I was able to submit them either by tapping them out or just controlling them. And that gives you a real big confidence boost inside and it kind of was the gateway for me trying other sports like climbing, surfing, you know, snowboarding, etc. When it comes to looking for a Jiu Jitsu gym, ideally you want to find something that's local to you. Also research the instructor, making sure they're a legitimate black belt because, you know, some people have been posing as fake black belt. But yeah, this is um, the outfit you wear. It's a gi or a kimono back in the Japanese terms. You can either buy them very cheap. So you're looking around the 40 pound mark that come with a white belt if you're a beginner. And then you can go up all the way up to nearly 300 pounds for a gi. A tip I recommend if you buy a gi and before you go to your class is learn how to tie your belt. It's better to learn them now rather than turn up at class and learn how to tie your belt. You know, there's so many tutorials online, just do it at home. Then there is no gi. So this is a traditional no gi outfit. So it's comprised of either a rash guard, which they used to use in surfing and they just took those and made it their own. Or you can get a compression top, which most sports brands do. Uh, you get some shorts. Um, ideally, you want shorts that don't have pockets in them so you can't get your opponent's fingers caught in there and then break them. Uh, and you can wear leggings and with those, I recommend getting ones with no zips or anything because like metal bits because because it's such a close contact sport it's easy to injure your partner by rubbing a zip up against their face and they come with a scratch down it. So some protection gear you can wear. Uh, firstly I recommend wearing a mouth guard. You know you, you don't want to lose these teeth it's expensive. I've known people who have had their teeth knocked out and or had their teeth crushed, this will be a lifesaver in terms of your bank account. So you can also wear headgear. Um, this one's just to protect your ears. I have in the past had my ear ripped literally at the back. I've torn it and blood was everywhere. So that will prevent that from happening. I recommend getting one that's foamy because I, the wrestling ones, they've got all these plastic things and again, it's not great rubbing that against your opponent's face and body. It's just painful. You can also wear knee pads. I've seen people do it because, you know, you, you take a lot of toll on your knees, especially if you're older or have knee problems. Uh, again, get the foam ones that are nice and compact. Can go under the gi or just over the top here. I've known people to wear groin guards. I tried it once because I kept getting hit in the groin. 
Um, but then it just found it too cumbersome. I couldn't move properly. So I just got rid of it. And also in competition, you're not allowed to wear it anyway. One of the most important things I'm gonna recommend to you guys is hygiene when it comes to jujitsu. You know, it's a close contact sport. You're on mats. You can easily pick up something, especially in this whole Corona virus pandemic thing. When I was there, I always made sure I wore flip flops or sandals, whatever, when walking off of the mat, making sure my bare feet do not touch the ground anywhere in the gym. You wanna wash all your gear as well regularly because one thing you don't wanna contract anything you know it's easy to catch ringworm etc staph infection and now especially with this whole virus thing you want to make sure you're sanitizing everything your hands your feet and making sure you're not walking off the mats with your bare feet and bringing all that muck that you picked up off of the floor back onto these mats where someone's face is going to be planted on I'm going to show you some moves that you could probably do at home not too many just some basic ones that we do in the warm up that you probably won't be familiar with. So the first move I wanna show you is called a shrimp. So the idea is you're like this, person's on top of you, you bridge up, make space, and then turn onto your shoulder and push, push your hips out with your feet like that. And then bring them in, push up, and then push out again. So this is a great way of clearing space and getting away from your opponent if they're on top. Um, you can do a little routine like this, so you're not moving back like I was, where you just go up, just touch your feet, back. So, but this is an essential drill we do when we're training. So again, if you wanna go backwards and you've got the space, push through. Push through, bring the legs back, push through, like that. So you're just escaping from underneath someone. Another one that you've got to get used to is inverting and that is going backwards over your shoulder. And this is good for, say, a break fall like this. And then you roll over your shoulder and come out. So you want to roll over your shoulder instead of over your head because if you're going, if you're falling back, you're gonna smash your head on a concrete floor. You wanna learn how to kind of roll back over your shoulder and that will stop you from banging your head. Some people might not have the space to do that. So what I recommend doing is kind of going over your shoulder like that and then coming back and then go over the shoulder then come back. So these are great little moves to kind of get used to going back. And also you can just hold it there, so so you're there. But hold yourself in this position. Get used to inviting yourself because you're gonna be in that position a lot. People are gonna roll you over and it's good to just be comfortable with rolling out over your shoulder rather than over your head. All right, so this next move is a very important one. It's good in self-defense anyway. It's if you're on the ground and you wanna get up to stop your opponent from attacking you, and it's called a technical stand-up. We do this a lot in warm-up. So say you've, you've fallen down to the floor, you've done a break fall. So like a Turkish get up, you've got your foot based on the floor here, and then you're gonna kick out. That's gonna protect you from any opponent coming in. So opposite hand and opposite leg. That's going to protect your face. That's going to protect anyone coming in for your body. And you're going to base up on your elbow. So you've got your elbow like here. Again, like in the uh, Turkish get up when you're holding the cat bar like this. You're going to push up. So now I'm both off the ground. Again, protecting my face and my, uh, my body with my foot. Come back and then stand up ready to fight. See it on the other side. So you've fallen down to the floor, head always tucked into your chin so you don't smash your head on the back of a concrete floor. Again, so this time basing on this foot, protecting with the, your left foot and your right hand, come up and then base on your hand. Again, got that gap here and then pull this leg back here 
and that will protect you from any strikes, kicks, anyone trying to come in and take you down if you've fallen on the ground. So that's a few moves that we kind of do in the warm up that I thought might be useful for you guys to learn just before you start your first classes, etc. Uh, again, there's a wealth of knowledge out there, so definitely research some people online. They, they got beginner's tips. I'm gonna have a hunt through and put them in the description below. Uh, again, you can do other drills uh, or join online classes. I know my gym, Fight City Gym, they're doing um, jiu-jitsu classes on Zoom. Email my gym, see if you can join in because I'm not sure if it's closed off to members or it's open to the public. So there's other ways you can train at home that can complement your jiu-jitsu and I recommend yoga. That's a good one just to build flexibility in your body and that's really important with jiu-jitsu. Movement and mobility, that's a really good one. You know, there's guys who do like animal movements and so, etc. like that. So those are really good to look at. Just your general strength training, um, you know, push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, working on your core muscles, squats are really good. Uh, if you've got kettlebells, even better, you know, doing swing squats with those or get-ups. Another important one is cardio, so going out for long runs, you know, but if you really want to feel that intensity of a five-minute jiu-jitsu round, it's best to do high intensity Tabata training. When it comes to sparring jiu-jitsu, I reckon take it easy and relax. You know, you don't want to go in there trying to kill your opponent because it's going to be a friend in class and the last thing you want to do is injure them. I've broken my cheekbone, I've fractured my elbow, I've ripped the back of my ear, ruined my fingers multiple times. So, you know, if you go in strength, then and stiff, there's gonna be a lot more injury. And you just wanna respect and learn from that process. You don't wanna go in there thinking, I'm here to compete against everyone, you know. And that's the problem. A lot of people do come in with that mentality, thinking they need to show they can do it. But you're gonna progress quicker if you just keep an open mind and try new things, not too scared about getting submitted. And, you know, just, having fun with it. So yeah, that's it for today's episode. Uh, again, what I said is from a beginner's perspective, trying to help people who are wanting to start slash, you know, on the edge of it. So hopefully I've encouraged you to join it. Again, it's an awesome sport, it will provide so much confidence, etc. So definitely worth doing. Uh, I don't know when training's gonna start up, uh, hopefully soon but again I don't want to rush it I'd rather stay safe and make sure everyone else is safe before everything kicks back up if you're thinking of joining jiu-jitsu and still a bit on edge then let me know in the comments below or if you've signed up already or brand new to it let me know and we can just chat and hopefully you know we can meet up sometime soon and get a few rounds in hope you're all staying safe again and taking care of each other training hard, and I shall see you in the next one. Remember the technical stand-up.